Well, hello there. I am getting ready to tackle another project. I'm getting ready to refinish this old cast iron tub. And I've watched a bunch of videos online and decided to document my process in case it helps someone out there. So I already cleaned it really thoroughly with um, this product. Uh, this one has doesn't have bleach in it, it has hydrochloric acid, which is what was recommended in one of the videos I watched. And so I got the tub as clean as I could already. Now I'm gonna fix, there's a few little chips in it. Um, I'm gonna fix it with this porcelain chip fix that I just got at Home Depot. And then I'll get ready to pour the resin and I'll tell you all about it. This tub was put in in 1920, so it's 100 years old. Um, so it obviously needs a little bit of work, little chips. Um, I can feel the, that there's porcelain missing. Here's another one right here. There's another one here. And I believe one over here. I will also cover in epoxy the front of the tub here. All right, I'm, uh, I'm kind of ready to get started. Almost, almost ready to get started. And I'm a little nervous. I don't know, I'm just gonna go for it and see what happens. So you can see my tub is taped off the surround and the front of it. Now I'm gonna try and do the front as well, but I don't know if I'll have enough product. So I taped it in a way that I can just remove this if I feel like I have enough product, but we'll see. I'm ready with my knee pads and the little yoga mat because this is a very hard floor and I want to protect my knees, my sensitive knees. I've got my gloves. My little gloves here and I've got my my Ecopel 2K kit. Now I just need to tape off these holes. We removed the hardware. Hubby helped me here remove the hardware and now I just need to tape all of these off to make sure the product doesn't get inside the pipes. So according to the research I did, it should be between 70 and 75, ideally, for the product to cure properly. I've got my hair tie because I'm gonna need to get this hair out of the way. Okay, I'm ready to do it. So I just opened the kit and this is what is included, um, plus this little 
scooper that I, I just added some tape to solidify it a little bit. And um, there you have it. The two part, part B, part A is in here, part B here, and I'm getting ready to mix it. I did a lot of research and I picked Ecopel 2K because not only did it seem like the best, most durable product, also I picked it because there's no fumes, there's no really harsh fumes and smell. So I'm ready to get started. Um, so there's this little black plastic tag here. I think, I think I need to just cut it off. There we go. Don't want to leave it in the tub. Okay, let's put this in here. Gloves on, very important. clean stir stick. It's a little tricky to open. I'll try with this. Get it in there. There we go. Ooh, okay. All right, there's quite a bit on the cap. I'm not sure if I should put it back in there, but I think I will, because I need all the product I can get, because I'm hoping to do the outside, the front side of the tub as well. They didn't say anything about this in the videos I watched, so, I'm just going to do it. I need to stir it anyway, so... Sorry about the noise. Hubby is building a deck back there. All right. It's pretty thick. It's actually very thick. Oops, there's a little drip that ended up in the tub. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Um, I don't know if you can see, but the component A is very thick, so you're going to want a pretty strong stir stick. I'm pouring component B into it. Okay. Now I'm going to set a timer, both for the 10 minutes, because it needs to be stirred thoroughly for at least 10 minutes. And also for one hour, because I have about one hour to work with the product until it starts to get too hard and um, it won't self-level anymore. So I'm going to do that. All right, let the stirring begin. So the component B is much more liquid and component A is really, really thick. So you want to really combine the two to make it homogenous. A little easier to do it like this. So you wanna make sure that you get all the stuff from the bottom, from the sides, and mix it in really, really thoroughly for at least 10 minutes. this my little timer I just went off and I'll show you the consistency is like it's nice and creamy it's a little more liquid so probably much easier to apply like this I'm guessing <laughs> since that's how you need to do it okay so I will be very careful not to spill this I will get rid of my stir stick. I did 12 minutes just to be on the safe side. Um, and it looks pretty homogenous, so I think we'll 
be okay. Now I have this cup that I'm going to use because it'll be easier to pour from this than from the big tub. So I'm going to use this and I'm also going to put a little, a smaller cup on top of the drain just to make sure um, that none of the product gets in it. It's pretty well taped off but just for double precautions. So I saw the uh, in one of the videos, they were showing to put just a little bit of product and then right over the drain. We'll see how that works. And now I'm gonna pour some into my little cup here. So here we go, I'm nervous, but I'm doing it. Start on the back wall. And I taped everything off to make sure I don't get any on the wall. See, I would have gotten some there. I did two layers of tape, of masking tape, just to be on the safe side. And that ended up being a good thing, I guess. I'm gonna wait to do the front because I need to be leaning against it. Now you wanna just let it drip um, for now, anyway. Another cup full. Now I'll do the front. Oh, I guess my tub is not, the tub sides are not very slanted because it's not flowing automatically like I've seen in some of the videos. provided in the kit and make sure it's clean and make sure it rolls really well and I'm going to start um, distributing kind of moving the product around to make sure it goes to all the areas get it all the way to the corner Okay, you see it's starting to pool on the bottom here. I think now would be a good time to use my little cup to pour some more into this. I'm gonna get this out of the flow. Pour some more in here. Get all the way to the edge, to the wall, basically. I think those are air bubbles because it's inevitable. Air bubbles are going to form when you're stirring the product for 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Um, so I'm going to use a heat gun. That's what they recommend to use a heat gun to, or, or a hair dryer, just some heat to remove the air bubbles at some point in the process. Not right this second. The texture is already changing and that's scaring me a little bit. I'm worried that I won't have enough time. But the pros guarantee that you have, I think you have an hour to work with it. Okay, now I guess the next thing is to, yes, to do the front because I've got some product everywhere on the back. Although there's some little areas that kind of look, um, I can, like I can kind of see through. I can see the, it feels like I can see the old tub underneath and that worries me a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of product just to be on the safe side. Mm -hmm. 
left some left in the main container, so I'm gonna pour that back in, pour that in as well. There could be some compound that's not properly or not 100% mixed, not 100% combined, so you're not supposed to scrape the container. Make sure your floor is covered because this can be messy. So let's get some of this into my cup. There's a bunch in the front, I can see it. It's really pooling up here. I should be able to get a full cup just from scooping up the product on the bottom. And let's do the front. I'm going to move my yoga mat out of the way. All right. Oh, that's the part that makes me most nervous. All right, let's do it. So now I can't lean up against the tub anymore. So this is good for the abs. Okay, let me just move, I'll start moving the product around and make sure it flows to the front as well. As you can see, it's pretty thick and it needs to flow on both sides because there's a little edge here that needs to get covered. And I don't think I'll have enough for the front wall, the outside front wall of the tub. point it's still pretty safe to move the product around to make sure it covers every every little bit of the tub this is not particularly easy on the back <laughs> that's where I got I think I'm gonna change my gloves um, for the next part for the last little bit because they're pretty pretty dirty so now i'm gonna move the product around with the roller um, grab my cup move it up the walls to make sure that it covers every little bit of the tub And by the way, no fumes, no harsh smells. So I'm loving this. Ooh, I see a hair. Uh-oh, need to get that out. Mm -hmm. All right, it looks like the product is pretty much everywhere. Now I am going to, I won't need the cup anymore. So, oops, I touched this part. I'm going to make sure that it's all over the front wall as well. I mean the front edge. So I see a bunch of little air bubbles, so I think I'm going to, I'm going to do a little pass with the heat gun right now. Do a little bit more. Moving around. I might have enough. 
enough for the front wall. No, I'm not sure. There's quite a bit on the bottom. But I'm moving this around. That's a lot of product. So I might give it a try. Ooh. It's a substantial surface though. Let's do the heat gun and then we'll decide. See the little bubbles just popping. And it's important to do it while it's still self-leveling. Otherwise you're gonna end up with hard bubbles in there. Now that I'm seeing how much product there is down there, I think I'm gonna try and do the front wall. And I set things up in a way that I can remove this pretty easily. And get it done. So there you have it. Okay. I prepared another cup just in case, and I'm glad I did. So now let's try and scoop up more material without um, messing up the front edge. This is messy. I'm going for it now. fully committed at this point. Let's see if I can move this down a little bit with my roller. And I wanted to get in all the grout cracks as well. said now I'm fully committed so I'm just gonna sort of paint it on since it's, it's not a surface that really gets um, any kind of wear and tear so hopefully a thinner coat will work Make sure the inside of the tub is doing okay. Let's maximize it. At least I will have tried. I know this is not how the pros do it. And I'm not a pro. here but I'm not gonna touch it anymore because it's an hour now and um, from what I've learned at this point the self-leveling agent that's in there has mostly evaporated so I don't want to be touching it um, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna remove one layer of plastic that I put on the floor so that I can keep working uh, with the drain and have it not be so messy. Now I can step on this area without getting super dirty. Okay. Let's get some of, oh wow, there's a lot of, ah, oops. Of course I can the edge of the tub. A lot of product around here. I'm just using a little piece of cardboard to scoop it up. As you can see, the product is still pooling. Um, 
inside the drain area. So I keep scooping it up every, I don't know, 15, 10, 15 minutes or so. As much as I can without touching the rest of the tub. And that's tricky. Okay, I have removed the final layer of plastic and the duct tape should be removed five or six hours after application. That's the part I was kind of nervous about, but I can kind of feel the product thickening and slowing down and I keep scooping out the excess every like 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes or so. I also kind of removed, uh, the, I scraped the product off of the um, overflow and we have this extra hole there that we're gonna cover up. Okay, so I just popped and removed the tape that was here. And of course, um, this one was really tricky to remove and I um, stuck my finger in there. So I added a little, because there was really, I mean, not enough product on there anymore. So I just added a tiny bit and I'm hoping it will level out enough, but we'll see. That might be my, my big mistake, my big oops. Okay, it's the morning after and I'm going in to check out my work. Whoa, it's looking good. It's looking really good. Wow. Okay. Nothing bad or crazy happened during the night. No bug got stuck to the product while it was drying. It's looking good. Looking really good. A little piece of lint right here. I don't know how it ended up there, but it wasn't there when I left last night. Oh well. So I decided to go to bed. Um, after about six hours and I created, I removed the tape from the drain and I created this little dam with masking tape and I'm glad I did because you can see the product went all the way up to it and the product is still kind of flexible. Okay, I'm going to remove this little masking tape dam that I made last night. So I'm at like 22 hours right now and you can see the product can, uh, it's hardened, but it's still flexible. So I can cut off the excess fairly easily. Nice. I didn't anticipate that. Um, as you can see, it's, um, you can hear it, it's set. It's not completely cured, but it's, it's pretty much set, so I can touch it. There's no more sticky feeling to it. Um, and it looks great. That was definitely $150 really well spent. Just have to put the hardware back on, but it looks brand new. So here's a little bit about my process. Um, first of all, definitely important to watch some videos. I watched several of them and the videos they have on their website, the refinished bath solutions. They are awesome. The guy who does the videos, I don't know what his name is, but he's awesome, very thorough, very descriptive and informative. Um, one of the videos I watched, he um, showed that it's not really a messy process. He showed his clean clothes before and after. 
I have to disagree with that one. <laughs> Maybe for a pro who does that every day, for a new person trying this for the first time, it was pretty freaking messy. So keep that in mind if you're gonna try it. Another thing, this product works amazing, but the fumes are nasty, nasty. The top refinishing product itself has zero smell, zero fumes, but this is nasty. You'll wanna wear a mask for this. Let's see, what else? So it's not perfect. There's a few little mistakes. The bottom of the tub, there's kind of like a, there's a wave. You can kind of see the where the product was trying to move. So it's a little bit too thick here. You can kind of see it in the light, in this light. You can see that there's extra product here. Let me try and get it better. Yeah, you can see there's a wave. It's not completely flat and you can definitely feel it when you touch the bottom of the tub. So that tells me I could have removed a lot more product from the bottom of the tub and applied it to the front. Um, but I was, I was afraid to, I was afraid, I was afraid to scoop too much out. So I kind of, I kind of let it be, but it kept moving for several hours. And also the front of the tub, because I didn't quite use enough product, there are some drips. You can see those pretty clearly. And at this point, I kind of don't care. It's a lot better than it was, so I'm okay with it. Let's see what else. I was really worried about the whole drain experience. I was worried how that would go. I was worried that some of the product might get into the drain. That actually ended up being fairly easy. Uh, the masking tape worked really well, protected it perfectly. And as I kept scooping the product off of the drain area, I could really feel how the product was thickening and setting and I could kind of feel how much it was moving every time I scooped it out, which initially was every like 10 to 15 minutes. And then after that, like every 30 minutes, I'd come back in to check. So um, that ended up being pretty easy. Also, it was hard to figure out when to really stop touching it. So the product is surprisingly forgiving. My little oops I added a little product on there pretty late in the process. You can barely see it. It's just a little bumpy, but you can barely see it. So I removed the tape from those areas uh, probably like five hours into it. Just cut it with a little exacto knife to be able to get my, to get a grip and then just pull it off with my fingers. And from the walls, because the product is not quite as thick, it had already stopped moving. So it was great. On the bottom, I waited the full six hours that they recommend. And even at that point, I wasn't sure, I wasn't convinced that it wasn't gonna move towards the drain anymore because that's the low spot. So another important thing, make sure you remove the tape around the tub and the sides as soon as you're done with applying the product. You want to remove it while it's still really flexible. That makes it nice and clean and easy to remove. But the, the bottom, I waited to remove the last part, which was the duct tape. I waited until the very end, until six hours, and it still flowed a little bit. So if you're gonna try this, make sure you have a full six hours to put your attention on it, because the, the application is really not that long, but then you have to keep checking in on it, you have to keep removing the product from the drain area, so you have to have a good chunk of six hours, a good block of six hours, to, to get this done. Also, I was glad I created an extra little paper cup. I just made one out of a, like a to-go Chinese food container. 
uh, because the cup that they provide with the kit, it got destroyed pretty quickly. So I was glad I had an extra one. And I ended up using, I think, four pairs of gloves, maybe even five. And it's so sticky, so messy, that I, I wanted to change my gloves fairly often. And um, I think that's about it. I'm really glad I did it. I was really nervous, I was really scared. And I'm glad I jumped in and did it because I'm super happy with the result. And you can do it too.